Okay, well, I'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar that we're going to be doing today. Uh, let's get started. It's officially 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. My name is Julie, and I work on the support team over here at Complete Campaigns. This is going to be a basic overview of back office. It's really an introduction into the back office database. And we are not taking questions during this webinar, but if you do have any questions, I would like to encourage you to please call us at 888-217-9600 or email us. And you can send an email to support at completecampaigns.com. And I'll repeat that information at the end of our training. We are going to be using a sample database uh, here today, so I'd like to show you how to log in. Uh, all you need to do to get started is go to completecampaigns.com, and then you can click Client Login in the upper right-hand corner. This is going to cause our screen to refresh, and I'm going to be able to get logged in. My product is already set to back office in this dropdown. And I'm going to log into my sample database. And I'm going to enter my username and my password. And now we have logged into our database. This screen that you're looking at right now is called My Dashboard. And it's essentially your launch page. Whenever you log in, you're going to start from this, this launch page. You can change some of the things that you're going to see on My Dashboard simply by clicking this button that says Show Management Tools. I now have a menu of some additional things that I can choose to have included on my dashboard. Perhaps I want to see today's calendar on my dashboard. All I need to do is toggle that option on. And perhaps I would like to make sure that I am getting some information about fundraising. So I might want to see my total that was raised last cycle. So I'm going to toggle that on as well. And then I am going to simply click Hide Management Tools. You can see that if I scroll down, we have today's calendar on the right-hand side. And then we can also see the total raised last cycle immediately below that. If I wanted to have this higher on uh, my screen, all I need to do is click this little up icon and it'll continue to move it up to the top of my screen. Some other things that you'll be able to see on my dashboard uh, are important notices. So you can see important notices right here. This is where we're going to provide you with important information. For example, if uh, we're going to be closed for a federal holiday, we'll give you some information about that and how to get in touch with us in, in that event. Immediately below that, you see a section that's labeled Announcements. This is something that you can use for your campaign. So these are your own announcements. Maybe I want to add an announcement um, about the fact that I have something coming up. So I'll click Add. And I'll just give it a title. And a message, and then I can just click Add. And then Close. And clicking Close is actually going to um, not close right now. So actually, sorry about that. We'll just X out of this. 
and I'm going to go back to my screen and press F5 on my keyboard, which is going to cause this page to refresh. And once that refreshes, you'll be able to see that announcement that I have added. Now the cool thing about announcements is that you can use it as a way to disseminate information amongst your campaign. As long as other users have selected in show management tools to have announcements show up on my dashboard, they are going to see the announcement next time they log into their database. The other section that you'll see that we have right here is a section labeled imports. So <clears throat> when you have a record that's ready to be imported into your database, this section will actually have a great import button that's available for you to click. And right now it's telling us that we have no records to import. If we did have records available to be imported, it would actually say you have 10 records to import. So it would give us a bit of a notification of, of what we can expect when we click that import button. And I'll show you what we call public pages in just a moment here. But as you probably know, you can take online contributions or have people sign up to be a volunteer through your back office public pages. And once somebody visits your public page, <clears throat> excuse me, and fills out their information, click submit, that record goes into your import queue. Okay, so this is your public page, against it. again, it's just a basic start page that you can use. Now let's take a look at how we can search for an individual and create a new individual record in back office. What I'm going to do is go to Add Search, and I'm going to select Individual from this dropdown. Now we're at our search screen. You'll see that you can actually search by last name, first name, middle initials, but we also have some additional search options that you can use. If you click View next to Additional Search Options, you'll see that we have an area where you can actually search by address if you happen to know the address. My favorite tool here actually is this email field. So if you know someone's email address, you could choose to search for that person by their email address. So there are just some different options that you can, can use to search for someone. And in the upper right hand side, we have a section that's labeled search options. The first option here is to use fuzzy logic. This is your wild card. So if you're searching for someone and you're not quite sure how their name is spelled, you can toggle this option on and it will find people that have a similar spelling or include some portion of what you're searching for in their name. We also have an option to include inactive records. Now I'll show you how to inactivate a record in just a moment here, but just be aware that once a record is inactivated, it still exists in your database. It's simply not going to be returned when you do a search for individuals unless you tell back office, I want you to return those records. Um, don't worry, back office is actually smart enough to know that if an inactive record has financial information associated with that, that record, it should be included in government reports and, and financial reports that you might run in the database. So it, it's smart enough to know that. I typically do not always leave these toggled on. Some people do. You can feel free to do that if you choose to do so. Um, I only use these tools when I'm really not sure. I figure why wade through additional search results if I don't need to. So let's go ahead and take a look for someone with, we'll use my last name. And I'm also going to search for my first name. And I'm just going to click search. And back office is letting us know that we actually don't have anyone in our database with this name. 
Now, back office tries to help you cut down on duplicate data entry by asking you to search for a record before you create a new record. So we don't have anyone matching this criteria. So what I'm going to choose to do is add a new individual. Before I do that, though, I'd like to point out uh, this icon or this information that you see right here. It's the delta symbol or that triangle and an A. The, that triangle or delta is the alt key on your keyboard. So these are hot keys or keyboard shortcuts. If you like to use keyboard shortcuts, you'll notice these throughout the database. And it'll just launch particular pages for you rather than causing you to or requiring you to click. So I'm going to click Add Individual. And my screen is going to refresh. And I am going to be able to enter all the pertinent information I have about this person. So I have my name already. Salutation is a nickname that someone prefers to be called. So I typically do go by Julie. I don't have a nickname necessarily, so I'll leave that here. But let's say that you had someone whose first name was Jonathan, and he prefers to go by John. You could enter that into the salutation field, and then you can pull that out um, in a spreadsheet if you're running a report for someone. I am going to enter a work address, and it will be my primary address. I do have this autocorrect toggled on. That is going to match the address that I enter up against the USPS database, and it's going to standardize it for me. Let's see how well I remember my zip code. We'll save our changes here and give you an opportunity to see how this will standardize the address. Okay, it didn't like my third floor, but um, it does recognize my zip code. So you'll see that I now have my four-digit extension associated with my zip code here. Now, below the section for addresses, we have an area for pledges. So if I were going to make a pledge, I would just click Add Pledge. And I am the person actually making the pledge, so this will be a direct pledge. I also have the option to choose a soft allocation pledge. For example, maybe I'm actually a fundraiser. And so I've said that I am going to raise $500 for the campaign. You can keep track of that by indicating that I've made a soft allocation pledge. I'm actually going to bring that money in. For our purposes, we'll choose this as a direct pledge. And my pledge amount will be $500. And the date that I make it is going to be today's date. And then you can just add whatever notes are pertinent to you. I'll click Add, Close. My screen refreshes, and once the screen finishes refreshing, you'll be able to see the pledge that I've added here. Now, the cool thing about pledges is that they are actively tied to the financial section of my record. So I've made a pledge for $500. When I make a contribution for $100, the back office database is actually going to automatically reduce my outstanding amount. You can see here my outstanding amount right now is $500. It'll automatically reduce that to $400. You don't have to go in and edit that outstanding amount in addition to entering the contribution. <clears throat> Below pledges, we have an area for events. From this view, from the individual record, this is for display purposes only. But here, you would be able to see if I had been invited to an event, if I was on a guest list. And then below events, we have a section for codes. Now, codes are very important to your database. It is how you tag people and identify them later. So maybe you add a code to the record of everyone who said that they will volunteer for you. 
what you can do after all those people have the volunteer code is run a report for everyone with that code and then you can email them or call them however you wanted to get in touch with them but it helps you identify a group of people so I am going to add a code here and I am going to choose uh, volunteers and I'm going to choose handout flyers. So I have a code type that's an umbrella to group together various codes. Under that code type, I have all these different options for my codes. This particular person is willing to hand out flyers. So I'm just going to add that code to this record. And I'll show you how to create your own codes uh, in just a moment here. So now this person has a code on their record indicating that they're willing to hand out flyers. Below that, we have an area for communications. Communications uh, can be incoming communications, so somebody's gotten in contact with the campaign. It can be outgoing communications. Maybe you've sent a broadcast email or you made a phone call to this person. You can also add follow-up needed reminders. So I'm going to click Add Con here. And I'm going to get a pop-up. And from this pop-up, what I'm going to do is add a follow-up needed call. I need to call this person. Now, the cool thing about adding a communication is that you can actually assign it to different users of your database. All you need to do is click this user drop-down. And you could select whichever user it's appropriate to be assigned to. And this follow-up needed reminder will show up on the dashboard of the person to whom it's been assigned. So they'll be able to see, ah, I have a follow-up needed reminder assigned to myself. So here's my follow-up needed reminder, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite myself to dinner. And then you can add a more detailed text about, I want you to call this person and invite them to dinner at this location at this time, for example. And we'll click Add and Close. Again, my screen refreshes. And now I have a follow-up needed reminder on my record. Now, one thing to note is that you can run reports for follow-up needed reminders. So I could generate a report for everybody that has a follow-up needed reminder. In addition to that, as I mentioned, it'll show up on the dashboard of the user to which it's been assigned, so they'll be able to see this. You can also add an attachment to someone's individual record. Um, maybe you want to be able to uh, associate a face with a name, so, and you happen to have a picture of this person. All you need to do is click Add Attachment, and you'll be able to upload an image here. Um, I have Quick Codes enabled here, so if I wanted to um, add this person to my broadcast email test. I just need to toggle this option on. Now this person has this code associated with their records. You'll see uh, that I can add phone numbers here. I can certainly add more than one phone number. I'll just click that. Uh, add phone. I can enter my first number. Maybe it's my home number. And then I would click Add. And then maybe I also wanted to add a work number. So I could choose this drop down, select work, enter the work number here, click add again, and then click close. And once my screen refreshed, I would have both of those numbers associated with this, uh, with this record. Below that, I have emails. And all we need to do to add an email, it's very similar to phones, you just click add email. And again, you'll get a pop-up and you can add someone's email address. Below that, we have affiliations. This is a way that you can link records together in your database. So maybe we have an organizational record for ACME organization. And I know that Julie is an employee of ACME organization. So I can create a link between ACME and Julie's record, uh, indicating that Julie is an employee. We're going to skip over financials for just a brief moment. Uh, you'll also see that we have this voter info section. Right now there are no matches found because this is not the address at which I'm registered to vote. 
if we can find the match between the name on your record and the address at, at, that you've entered, we actually have a database that we check against to see if the person has voter information available. We'll return some basic voter info for you in this section. We also have an area of other information where you can keep track of somebody's birth date, um, social security number, maybe you guys are sending out 1099s to people, you could enter that here. You also can indicate whether or not this person happens to be a candidate. If they are, you'll see if you click that candidate box, you can enter some additional information there. We also have a section for notes, and this is where you can keep track of some specific information about this person. Maybe I know that Julie got a puppy, and so I'm going to keep track of the fact that she got a puppy so I can ask her about her dog next time I talk to her. One thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to keep detailed conversational notes in this notes section. You definitely want to use communications to track the conversations you're having with people. And the reason for that is that it's easier to run a report on communications than it is to run a, a query or a report based on the notes section. Um, because the notes section can have all sorts of diverse uh, text in it. So it, it's more difficult to, unless you're very, very specific uniform of the wording that you're using. It's a little more difficult to end up putting in the notes section. So just go back up to the top of my screen here and just briefly mention some of these gray buttons that you'll see at the top of the screen. Save changes. Obviously, that's going to save your changes for you. And Save and Search is going to save your changes, and it's actually going to take you back to the search screen so that you can search for a new individual. If you wanted to make a record inactive, all you need to do is click this Make Inactive button. Now, a good thing to know is that now that I've set my record as inactive, I actually now have the option to make this record active again. Maybe I realized that I didn't want them to be inactive. I'll just click Make Active. You can delete a record. You could make a printout of everything that's on this screen. We also have a tool that will allow you to combine duplicates. And this is a helpful time-saving uh, tool that you can use. You'll see that there's this drop-down Copy Contact Info. Let's say that I am going to enter Julie's spouse into this database, and I know that they have the same address. All I need to do is go to this Copy Contact Info drop-down, and I'm going to choose to new individual. Back Office is going to launch me a new individual record, and it's going to have this contact information in it. I'm just going to have to enter that person's name. And I can also create a letter here. So I can choose um, these anything from this drop-down, and I can have it launch in Word for me. You can also choose to link spouses together in the general information section. So let's say I did create that, that record for a spouse by choosing Copy Contact Info, and then maybe I want to link these two together. I would simply click Link to Spouse and follow the prompts that Back Office is going to give me to link those two together. Let's move on to taking a look at how I can enter a contribution from this person. What I'm going to do is go to this financial section, and I'm going to click the Add Transaction drop-down. And from this drop-down, I can see a list of all the transaction types that I could actually add for someone, and I'm going to choose Contribution Monetary. Now my screen is going to refresh and I am going to be able to enter my contribution. So I certainly can change my date, the date that I uh, received the contribution or that it was given to me. Here is my contributor. Maybe I realize that Julie isn't the person that this contribution should be associated with. I can just delete that name out of here, and I'm going to type in someone else's name. 
okay, so I can see, here's, here's Davy Jones, and maybe that's the person that really was supposed to have given me this contribution. And it's a $100 contribution. Now, we talked a little bit about codes. I want to mention categories. Categories do a similar thing for us but they're, as codes do, but they're, it's specifically for money. So codes are for people, categories you want to use for money. Maybe this person responded to a specific fundraising drive that we had. Or um, maybe I'm giving them, or they gave me this contribution because we had a specific dinner that they attended. I could keep track of that by creating different categories. And then I could select them here as a category type and a category. You can choose the election that this should be associated with. Um, maybe you have different bank accounts that this might go into. You could select this here. You can also associate this with a specific event. You'll see that we have a field here for reporting description. Now, the reporting description will show up on your government reports. If you are someone that reports to the FEC, um, for example, you're probably familiar with the fact that this does show up on your FEC reports. Um, it's usually the purpose of, of the, the contribution. Um, just keep in mind that when you're working with financial information, when you see the word reporting, so when it has that ING on it, it's going to show up on your reports. So you could use this field to add some additional information. Maybe you wanted to disclose something to your analyst when you file your report. Here we have a drop down where we can choose the method. So perhaps they wrote us a check, maybe we got cash. We also have a field for intermediary, so if these funds were routed to us through a PAC, for example, we could enter that intermediary here. Sometimes it's called bundling or conduits. And we have a section here for thanked and also for cleared. I'm going to recommend that when you're entering your transaction, your contribution, that you leave both of these unchecked. Thanked is going to get checked as a function of using the thank you manager. And I'll show you that uh, before we sign off here. But the thank you manager is a standard report that you can run that will allow you to find all contributions that have not yet been thanked. And then you'll have an option to mark those as thanked once you've exported that information or sent the thank you notes to these people. And then next week when you run your thank you manager, you're only finding brand new transactions that have not yet been thanked. Cleared actually gets checked off as a function of reconciling your bank, your back office register against your bank account. And just so you know, you can do that by going to the Financial tab and selecting Register from that dropdown. <clears throat> internal memo, this is internal to you. One thing to note, however, is that if you are entering an expense and it's a check, and you use the internal memo field, if you use back office to actually print your checks, that internal memo will show up on the memo line. So just be aware of that. We then have a section for partners and splits. So let's say that I received a contribution from a law firm. It's on their check, they are the actual contributor. But I know that John and Mary, who work at that law firm, actually each gave X number of dollars to make up that check. I can keep track of that information in this partners and splits area. So maybe I know that Julie actually is the one that gave Davy this $100 to give to me. I'll just add that here. And then we have a section for soft allocations. Again, this is where you can keep track of fundraisers. It's similar to the, the soft allocations that we saw in the pledges, except this is for actual contributions received, not pledges that somebody says that they'll help you bring in. Um, so if, if you know that someone actually advocated for your campaign and caused this contribution to come in, you can keep track of the soft allocation here. And now I'm just going to save my changes. 
back office remembers that I came in from a different record and it's letting me know that I have made a change in my contributor field and yep I am okay with that and now I have entered my financial transaction just note that back office is also letting me know that my election that I selected is already over. It's also letting me know that on the individual record for this person, I don't have an occupation or an employer listed. If I wanted, I could just click the word contributor and it would actually launch Davy's record for me. So I'd be able to enter that information right now if I did choose to do so. The other thing that I want to mention here is that you'll see notice that my contribution didn't actually go into the financial register yet. It's actually sitting over here in undeposited funds. I would need to create a deposit batch and move that into my financial register. We're going to be having a financial training next week, so we'll go into that a little bit further uh, when we do that training. But this is how you can enter a contribution. And if you have questions about entering any of your transactions, please do contact us. We're more than happy to answer your questions. All right. Now, one thing that I'd like to show you is uh, something that is going to show up now on my dashboard based on the fact that I created that follow-up needed reminder in my record. <clears throat> I'm going to click Back Office. And that's actually going to take me back to my dashboard. So just be aware of that. You can always click back office and it'll launch you back to my dashboard. So here we are on my dashboard and over here on the right, you're going to see my follow-up needed reminders. And I can see that there is a follow-up needed reminder assigned to me for the individual Julie Deloach. Now, my name here is actually a hyperlink, and so if I clicked this, I could open my record and get some additional information about what I'm supposed to be doing for this follow-up needed reminder. In this situation, maybe I already knew exactly what I needed to do, I've already done it. I'm actually going to just click this box that says Followed Up. I've already done this. And then I'm going to click Update. And now when my screen updates, you'll see that this follow-up needed reminder for Julie Deloach is no longer listed here. That follow-up needed reminder is completed, so there's no need to have it show up as some on my to-do list, essentially. All right, let's take a look at how you can create codes in back office. What we're going to do is go to the Management tab, and I'm just going to select Codes from this drop-down. My screen refreshes, and you'll see that we have Code Types and Codes. Now, Code Types are umbrellas for various codes. So again, uh, the example that I mentioned earlier is maybe I have a code type for volunteers, and then I can have various codes that are associated with that code type. So I could have knock on doors and work in office and stuff envelopes as my codes, the specifics of what they're willing to do, but they all fall under that umbrella of a volunteer. This is, again, where you can create new codes. All I would need to do is click Add Code. Now I get a pop-up and I can create my, my code. Um, maybe I have been knocking on doors for some reason and I want to keep track of the houses that have a dog so that we can be aware of that in the future. So I'm just going to create a code of dog. And then I'm going to add and close. And you'll see that I now have a code listed here of dog. Creating a code type works in a very similar manner. If I wanted to edit existing codes, all I would need to do is change my view mode drop down to edit mode. You'll see that in the code type section, this is where I can able enable quick codes. So if you recall from the individual record, there were codes that I could just toggle on 
on that individual record. This is how you enable that. I also have an option for personal quick codes. Maybe I have a code that I want to be able to select, but I know that not every other user of the database cares about having this on every individual record that they look at. So I could set this as a personal quick code so that only my username and password when I log in would cause this particular code or code type to show up on each individual record as a toggle on option. Now the other thing that I'd like to point out here is in the code section we have an option that says show code counts. So maybe I want to see how many records actually have these codes on, on their record. So I'm going to check that. And my screen is now showing me, okay, so one record has broadcast email test. Um, we have six former presidents in our database. And so on, you'll see that there, it's giving us a count of, of how many people have these, these codes actually on their records. All right, so that's where you can go to create a new code. So great, you have codes and you're using them. Let's take a look at how you can run a query based on codes. Maybe you want to find every, let's, let's find everyone who is willing to hand out flyers. We know we only have one, but we can still take a look at that. So I'm going to go to reports and I'm going to choose custom reports from this drop down. Now this is the custom report generator. Um, I know it looks a little complex. If you haven't used this in the past, just remember that we're more than willing to help you through this. So uh, feel free to pick up the phone or send us an email if you have a query that you're trying to generate. We're just going to do a pretty straightforward one. We want to find people with a particular code on their record. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is click the table drop down and I'm going to choose codes. That's the table I want to pull from. And then I'm going to click the field drop down. And again, I'm going to choose code. My relationship is going to be exactly matches. And then my value is going to be fly. That's who I'm looking for. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we went from very general to very specific. So just keep that in mind as you're building your codes. You're starting out <clears throat> with a very general request and then getting more detailed as you move to the right. I'm now going to click Add to Query. And you'll see that this moves the query that I just created or the criteria that I just created from the query builder down to the query detail section of my screen. This is my only piece of criteria that I'm concerned about right now, but maybe before I export this, I want to know how many records match my criteria. I'm not going to set any export options. I'm going to leave the type set as general and the format set as none, and I'm just going to click Submit Query. This is just going to give me a count. Now my screen refreshes and you'll be able to see, okay, I have one record that's associated with this particular code. That's fine. Maybe the first thing I want to do is export this to a hyperlinks report. So what I would do is change, I would leave my type as general. And what I'm going to do is set the format drop down to hyperlinks. And then I'm just going to click submit query. Back Office is actually going to launch this for me in a new window. As I mentioned, it's a hyperlinks report, which means that I can choose to open this record from this particular report. When I do this, just a, an idea for you, I like to have this option to open links in a new window toggled on. Here's what will happen when I have that toggled on. I've selected Julie, I've clicked that hyperlink, and now I have a brand new pop-up window that's actually going to show me that individual record. 
now that I've seen the record, maybe I've edited it in some way or just wanted to give it a general review. Okay, that's great. I'm going to close this and my hyperlinks report is still here for me. So maybe if I had 10 people that matched my criteria, okay, I've done what I needed to do with this record, now I'm going to move on to the next one and it'll just keep opening those for us in new windows. So I'm going to close this now and then a lot of times people actually want to export their reports into a spreadsheet and you certainly can do that in your back office database. In that case, what you would do is set the type drop down to export and the format's going to be custom export merge file. We're going to scroll down here and click submit query. And from this pop-up, I can choose the spreadsheet that I want to export this into. So I could choose standard large export, and I know what will be exported because it's showing me in the included field section. I would just like to choose the standard letters export. So it's going to show me this information, the individual name, some address information, that sort of thing. Uh, you can create your own custom exports or your own spreadsheets in back office. And just so you know, you can do that in the management tab if you go to management exports. Now that I've chosen the format that I want to use, I'm going to click generate merge file. And once you see the grade download button, it's ready for you to click download. And now you can open up your report. And here's my spreadsheet with the information about the person that I requested. So you could save that or do a mail merge with it, whatever you choose. I'm not going to save this. And I'm going to close this. So again, um, if you have questions about building a query or want to know some additional things that you can do here, feel free to let us know. And we can um, walk you through the query that you're trying to build, help you figure out the best way to build something. So we're more than happy to do that. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at public pages. If you recall, I mentioned at the beginning that there's that import section on my dashboard. And that import section is fed by public pages that you create. So you can create your public pages by going to Managements, Management and choosing Public Pages from that dropdown. We already have various public pages already created. If I wanted to create a new one, I would just click Add Public Page. And I'm going to name this Sign Up. Because I'm going to create a volunteer sign up page. So you'll see in this page style drop down, I have an option to choose different sign up forms. So basically, do you want to be a volunteer? I also have an option to set up different types of contribution forms, and I can make those selections here. I can also choose to create an email form. So essentially, do you want to sign up to be on our email list? Again, for our purposes, we're just going to do a standard sign up. I could choose to associate stationary with this. You can create stationary for back office by using HTML or uploading a CSS file. You can do that by going to management stationary. So just keep that in mind. And if I wanted to affiliate stationary with this, I would just choose it from uh, my created stationary from this drop down. There are some different things that I can add to my public page. I could choose to specify fields that I want to have required. <clears throat> I can enter some page content if I wanted. And I can essentially have people code themselves by including codes on here. I'm going to save my changes.
And now that my screen's refreshed, let's actually take a look at the public page that we've created. All I need to do is go to this location URL, and I'm going to click it. And here's my sign up page that I've just created. Once someone fills this out and clicks submit on your dashboard next time you log in, you'll be able to see, oh, I have a record that I need to import. And you'll be able to import all this information into that person's record. So we'll close that. All right, well, let's take a look at how you can create a new user in your back office database. To create a new user, just go to System, choose Users from this dropdown, and now we're going to click Add User. My screen refreshes and I can enter my user information, so first name, last name, phone number, email, login and password. Now one thing to keep in mind with the login and password, if the user, once you set this up, you'll give this information, of course, to the actual user. And if they want to change their actual login and password, they certainly can do so. So just keep that in mind, they're not stuck with this for life. Now we have our permissions section. I can choose none, view, add, edit, and export. These are my options. Um, None means that they won't even be able to see, for example, financial information. I don't want them to even see any of that. View means they can see it, they just can't edit anything. Add, they can add stuff, they can't edit things, they cannot delete things. Edit is essentially a full permission for records and transactions. They'll be able to add new transactions, but they can also delete existing transactions if they have edit. Export gives someone permission to run reports on particular pieces of information and export that information from the database. So when we were just running that query for a code and exporting it, um, that's what I'm talking about. If you want them to be able to run a report, you need to give them export permissions. Advanced permissions. An administrator level, you can choose none, standard, financial. This essentially relates to the users that people will be able to set up. None means that they will not be able to set up any other users at all. Standard is going to allow someone to set up other users, but they will only be able to give view permission for any financial transactions. It doesn't matter if they have, they themselves as a user have edit permission, they can only give you permission for new users that they try to create. Again, that's the standard administrator level. Financial administrator means that you can set up users with any level of permissions you choose. Broadcast communications, do you want someone to be able to send broadcast email or broadcast fax from the database? You can select that here. Data enhancements, um, do you want them to be able to choose to update phone numbers uh, against an external database. The reason that this is a separate permission is that there is a charge for that. So you can just decide whether or not you want someone to be able to do that. And then we have an option for import queues. Again, this is the import queue on my dashboard. So if you don't want them to import anything, just give them none. Maybe you only want them to import volunteers or people that sign up to be on your email list allow them non-financial records, but if they should be able to import contributions in addition to people that sign up for your email or decide to be a volunteer, give them all records. And then you just need to click Save and provide that person with their login and password and they'll be able to log into the database. Now, I did mention that everyone has the ability to update their own login and password. And to do that, all you need to do is go to System and choose My Account. I do not want to save these changes, so I'm going to click Cancel. And now you'll see that you, you might not have been able to notice it because I was clicking Cancel, but we did navigate to a different screen. So this is a screen that you'll see once you go to System, My Account. <clears throat> Abe has the ability to update his name, also phone number and email. We can also change the login as well as the password here. So all users have the ability to update this for themselves. 
and they can do this simply by going to System, My Account. All right, I want to show you where our help file is located. If you did want to access the help file, all you need to do is go to Help, Documentation. And this is going to bring you to a pop-up which will have a menu of different help files that you can access. I'll maximize this for us. So you'll see that there are all sorts of different help files here. Um, there are help files on financial transactions um, that you can choose to take a look at. There are help files on some government reporting issues that you might want to take a look at. But just take a look in here and, see, and you'll see that there are all sorts of different help files that may be of assistance to you. So what you can do when you see a help file that looks like something you want to review, just click on it. And your pop-up will actually refresh with the help file for you. So you can certainly always use the help file. Um, you can also get in touch with support. Again, you can definitely call us, 888-217-9600. You can also go to help contact support. And this is going to allow you to send us an email. So just keep that in mind that you can do that from here. And we have a couple more moments left here. Um, let's see. One thing to keep in mind is that we took a look specifically at adding individual records, but you can also add organizational records, and you can also create events in your back office database. It's a very similar process to adding a new individual record. So just keep that in, as, in mind as well as you're going through the system. Uh, again, we are going to be having a more detailed financial training coming up, and you'll get emails uh, inviting you to that as well. But in the meantime, if you do have questions about the system, please feel free to give us a call. Again, the number is 888-217-9600, or you can email us at support at completecampaigns.com. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you next time.